up for the night time. Days are wide awake. Visions of a crazy man. Not me, for goodness sake, but I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. I'm seeing things. Believe me, I've never seen before. Got a stack of messages for you. Where have you been all afternoon? We've been working. I was covering a water flirtation plant in Scarborough. Oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, yeah, it was really fascinating. 26 pools of stagnant water. What do you got here? Well, I got one from Marge. Yeah. And nine from someone called Stanley Malton. Throw those away, please. Every one of them. Thank you very but much. He called every 15 minutes. It could be urgent. Every time this man calls, it's urgent. It's always money. It was $300 last time and $200 before then. You gave that man $300? I thought I loaned that man $300. Well, obviously, Stanley had a different idea. But, Louie, you can't give anyone $300. I hate to say it, but Stanley is a loser with a capital L. Hello? Oh, uh, Marge, Louie. We've got a terrible problem. What? I was cleaning Jason's room this morning, and I found magazines under his bed. So? There were skin magazines with pictures of naked women in them. Jason? Playboys. Playboys? Well, well maybe they got an interview with, uh, what's his name, Steven Spielberg or, uh, what's that other guy? Uh, uh, Lucas, George Lucas. He loves that stuff, science. You know? There were 20 uh, different issues. 20 different issues. Well, maybe they're running a running thing on, uh, Star Wars. Yeah, with Chewbacca's a centerfold, right? Louis, this is serious. The kid is only 12. God almighty, where the heck does the time go? 12 years old. That, that means that the, the puberty thing's gonna hit him. Hi. Does Louis Ciccone live here? Uh, sometimes. I'm Stanley Moulton, and I'd really like to talk to him. Oh, Mr. Moulton. Louis's often spoken of you. God, I remember when I was 12 years old. I, I, just before it hit me, I, I used to have this hat, this Davy Crockett hat. I used to wear it all the time. It was so much fun. And the puberty thing hit me, and it's a shame to wear the hat after that. Please, Louis, your son is looking at pictures of filth. I'm not interested in your sex life. Yeah, I noticed that much. I want you over here to talk to Jason. What am I going to say? I don't know. Just don't mention Davy Crockett. You're right, okay. I wonder whatever happened to that hat. When he finishes his assignment in Argentina, there's talk of him going to uh, the Yukon. And I don't know when he'll be back in Toronto. Uh, okay, Mrs. Ciccone. Uh, can you give him this when he gets back? Three hundred dollars. And tell him it really came in handy when I needed it. Thanks. I'll see you. Louis! Everyone else was calling me a loser with a capital L. Hey, not me, Stanley. No, no, no. You stood by me all the way. You, you loaned me that money. You got me that construction job. Yeah, what's money? Nothing, right? It's nothing. Yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing. You were the only one that stood by me when they charged me with kidnapping Little Miss Italy. Well, that could have happened to anybody, probably. Yeah, me and Rosanna were like that. We exchanged rings, everything. As soon as she wins the crown, she drops me like a hot tortellini. Jeez. Where are you going? This is not the way to Marge. You make a wrong turn or what? No, no, I just want you to meet Jackie, my fiancée. No, no, you'll love her. Look, Stanley, I I'd love to meet this woman, but I gotta go see my wife, okay? I promise. Some other time I'll meet her, right? Yeah, yeah, wait. We're, we're almost there. We'll only be five minutes. Jackie's not a big talker. Okay, five minutes, that's it. The kid came down with a bad case of puberty. Look at this place. It's bigger than my high school. What's your fiancée do? Is she a domestic here? No, oh, Jackie's not a maid. She owns the place. She owns this place? Well, her father owns it and her uncle, but one day this will all be hers. Oh, I'm nuts about it, Louie. Well, if I'd known you were going to marry a woman living in a place like this, I'd ask for the interest on the uh, 300 bucks, you know? <laughs> Louie, I don't get any money from Jackie. What's hers is hers, and what's mine is mine. Too bad you didn't bring your bathing suit. Is she the swimming pool? Yeah, yeah, that's how I met Jackie. Uh, they hired me to build a cabana out back. After you got me into the construction business, I took up carpentry. I owe it all to you, Louie. I'll set it for the interest, okay? Yeah, you'll get it, you'll get it. I need it, I need it. Uh, hey, there's just one thing. Uh, after you meet Jackie's father and her uncle, uh, don't talk about the marriage, okay? She didn't tell him yet. I want to see. Hi, Mr. Persegian. Is Jackie home? 
Shut up. You listen to me, punk. You stay away from my little girl. I don't want you to call her. I don't want you to talk to her. Never, ever. Uh, what about the cabana? I haven't finished. The cabana's finished. And so are you. I uh, guess she must have told him that. She shouldn't have done that. He was just starting to like me. Well, I'm sure he's nuts about you. It's just that he doesn't know how to express himself, you know? Jackie! Jackie, it's me, Stanley! Jackie, honey! Jackie, it's me, Stanley! Sit up, please, Princess. Uncle Sam, I want to talk to him, please. But Papa, he's a sick man. Don't make him unhappy. Jackie! Hey, Stanley, I'll tell you something. I got a feeling that they don't want to see you right now. Maybe if you come back tomorrow, they'll let you in here, huh? Stanley, Stanley, what are we going this way for? The car's over there, right? It's Jackie's car. Come That's on. Jackie's car. Of course it is. Salute. Salute. I think maybe we ought to take Jackie on a trip, eh? We didn't raise Jackie to get stuck with a fat slob like Malton. Well, I don't want you to worry about it, Freddy. Don't get upset. I'll handle it. I've already taken care of it. What do you mean? I paid him off. Ten thousand bucks in an envelope. <laughs> it's all over with. Well, I'm not so sure. Frankie, I took care of it. Why don't you go to bed? Studying to be a psychiatric nurse. Loves needlepoint, Engelbert Humperdinck, and men who do it in hammocks. Um. Men who do it in hammocks. Oh. Listen, you're three hours late. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry I got tied up. God almighty, look at all these magazines. Well, Jason's already in bed. Well, I can stay over and I'll talk to him in the morning. Stay over? Yeah. Suppose you want to do it in a hammock, huh? What? You're not sleeping over tonight, Louis. I cannot sleep with anybody tonight. Well, I didn't think I was just anybody. Look, just go and take these gynecologist monthlies with you, okay? Come on, I came all the way over here. Can I just stay over? And... Listen, Louis, I'm not mad at you. I'm just so upset. I've been looking at these magazines from May to December, and I'm about to throw up. Now, all I want to do is go to bed alone with a cup of nice hot Ovaltine and a copy of Anne of Green Gables. This thing's gonna give you a hernia. Good night, Lou. Good night. Louis! What? What? There's a call for you. All right, I'm coming. I'm coming, man. Yeah, hi, Ciccone. Good morning, Ciccone. Got a murder for you. 555 Rolling Hills Road. A murder? Wait a minute. Would you say 55? Five? Wake up, Ciccone. 555 five, five, Rolling Hills Road. Get right on it. Okay, thanks. 555. Five, five. Rolling Hills Road. Louis. Well, what time is it? 5.30. 5.30. Where the hell am I going to get a cab at 5.30? Give me a hand with this urn, will you? Watch it, it's hot. Hi, oh, jeez. Careful! Hot, hot. What? Watch it, watch it, watch it. Oh, my lady, why don't you make iced coffee? We're taking this anyway. Now, the Lady of Lords is having a bazaar. God. And I'm volunteering the refreshments. Well, why don't you ask Pop to help you? Your father becomes an agnostic every time he hears the word volunteer. Listen, Ma, do me a favor, okay? This uh, Lady of Lords is not too far from where I'm going, all right? And you can uh, give me five minutes, I'll change, and you take me where I'm going, because I can't get a cab. You gonna volunteer? No, 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 I gotta go cover the murder. Sure, everybody's got an excuse. This is it. Son of a gun, it was here last night. You should have slept over. It would have saved me a trip. This is Roger Collins reporting from the scene of Metro's 17th homicide of the year. 
Dead is Roland Parsegian of 555 Rolling Hills Road, killed by a shotgun blast to the back at 1.30 this morning. Police have issued a warrant for the arrest of Stanley Malton, a carpenter. Stanley? Stanley Malton? They think Stanley Malton did this? Chicconi, would you okay, give me a it. break? I'm trying to make television here. Stanley Malton is a friend of mine. I was with him here last night. He could, there's no way he did anything like this. They think this? That's what the film at 11 is going to say. Unless, of course, you keep interrupting me. In which case, there will be no film at 11. And how will people find out what happened? We'll read about it in the newspaper. Who reads? Who's the investigating officer on this? Sergeant Brown. We were telling that Louis Ciccone's out here. I want to see him. I got very pertinent information. I was with Stanley Moulton, the accused, last night. He didn't do it. It's pretty good. Best I've heard so far. Brown doesn't want to talk to anybody. He doesn't want to see anyone. All right. Right. Let me give you a hand, will you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get that? You got over there in the truck. You want anything, Doc? See if they have some pruned in Right. Lucia Coney, Toronto Gazette. Can I talk to you for a couple of minutes? Are you, uh, Dr. Uh... Leopold, Adolphus Leopold? I have no right. comment. Uh, Ciccone? Did you say Ciccone? Yeah. You're the guy that did that thing last year on the psychologist experimenting on drunks? Yeah, that was me. You know, you really could have done a job in the coroner's office on that thing, but you didn't. Uh, we appreciated your restraint. Well, you know what they say, one hand washes the other, right? Well, my business very carefully. Look, I'll be uh, done with this autopsy late afternoon. Stop by, maybe I'll have something to tell okay. you. Thanks a lot, eh? We'll keep you up to date. Uh, I appreciate it. Hey, Brunk, I talked to you for a second. Oh, not now. Molten That's didn't him. do it. Who's this, fellow? That's the guy. Who's this? That's the guy, I'm telling you. All He's right, in right, on right, it. Right, Him right, and that Molten right, guy. What's going on here? What's going on here? That bum was here last night with that punk right. Molten. All right, we'll take care of him. Yeah. You're, you're not going to get away with it. Just right. take him away. You're going to get killed. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cone, how would you like to come with me to the station? Okay, here's your statement. Right, thanks a lot. You're going to have to sign it. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, thanks. You put out an APB on him. Come on, brown man. They hustled Jackie and the uncle in the car with diplomatic plates. You trying to tell me this is routine? I wasn't born yesterday. No, according to your statement, you were born April 9th, 1943 makes you an Aries, sign of the Ram, which explains why I get such a pain in my butt every time you run into me. I'm just a reporter who's doing his job, okay? And I gave you a nice little statement there. What do you say you give me one? Who are these people? Roland and Samuel Parsegian are United States citizens who retired to Canada about 25 years ago. 25 years ago? They retired in their 40s? Yeah, they're wealthy. Apparently, they made a killing in the market. So the guys with the diplomatic plates are from the American consulate? That's right. When they heard about the murder, they came out here to see if they could be of any help to the family. A standard procedure. Oh, yeah, a standard procedure. If the mayor of Buffalo went on a little walking tour of the Toronto subways and he accidentally fell on the tracks, they'd send somebody from the council to pick him up, right? Yeah. Not at 5.30 in the morning, they wouldn't. Jacone, what do you think this is? Meet the press? You wanted a statement? You got an official statement. Is it an unofficial statement? Does she work here? She works, but not here. What else you got on Stanley Malton besides the fact that he was in love with Precision's daughter? I'll tell you what else I've got is a previous criminal record. He doesn't have a record. Attempted kidnapping, 1980. A kidnapping? Come on, they dropped those charges. Little Miss Italy. He gave her a ring that was practically engaged. There's more. Possession of narcotics in 1972. Let me see this. An ounce of marijuana? Come on, everybody smoked dope in the 70s. This guy's a loser. He got caught. I wasn't smoking dope in the 70s. Neither was I. So from one non-doper to another, Stanley Moulton is not a killer, okay? There's one more piece of evidence. His fingerprints are all over the murder weapon. His fingerprints are all over? Mm-hmm. Now, do you want to sign this? I've got work to do. 
has his fingerprints to it only for murder weapon. This guy's fucking in my mind. Can I have a statement? Interesting place you got here. Yeah, we're pretty proud of it here. Really? Is that a buzz saw he has over there? No, it's a striker saw. It cuts through hard surfaces like bone, but not soft tissue. So we use it to open up the skull without cutting the brain. Right, that's interesting. Is this Parsian over here? Uh, no, no. We do a brisk business here, Mr. Ciccone. You know, two coroners, no waiting. No, this is um, suicide. Found over 100 pills in his stomach. Yeah, you know, sometimes I wonder why they just don't take one dose of something really lethal, like a strychnine or arsenic. Save all that swallowing. Strychnine, yeah, I remember that if I ever get depressed. Okay, what's your boy's name? Parsian. Roland. Let's see. Death was instantaneous. Cause of death, 12-gauge shotgun blast through the back. Not very nice. Charge entered just above the third intercostal space and splintered through most of the chest cavity. And the guy had advanced amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. How do you spell that? D-E-A-D. -D. Dead? Yeah. It's a degenerative nerve disease. It's what put him in his wheelchair. You know he's confined to a wheelchair, right? Huh? Yeah. Murderer just wasted his time. What? Why? What? Persegian would have been dead from the disease in six months. Whoever killed him was a real loser. It's a loser, right. Uh, okay. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, Leopold here. What do you want? No, no, I can't do that. Well, it's too late. The word just came down on this one. The lid's on. Absolutely no communication with the press. Not even off the record. Uh, word came down from whom? From whom? I got, word came down from whom? Have a heart, huh? Have a heart? I got shelves full of them. Bye-bye. Hi, Louie. Hi. Uh, where's Jason March? He's playing baseball. We're waiting for him to get home. We're waiting for him? Yeah. I asked Charlie over here so he could speak to Jason about the Playboys. He's my son, March. I am his father. I'll talk to him, okay? The father who didn't show up last night until very late. They're using surrogates for everything nowadays, Louie. Look, uh, Charlie, thank you very much, but he's my kid. I'm going to talk to him by myself, all right? Hey, thank you. Look, uh, I don't want to butt in. I mean, if you have a problem with this, I can leave. Charlie, you stay right where you are. I invited Charlie over here because he's a sex expert. How do you know? I teach high school health. I'm, uh, I'm dealing with sex every day, Louis. They teach sex in the high schools now? Yeah. Well, there was no sex in the curriculum when I went to high school, and I have no sexual problems. Oh, wait a minute now. Oh. Well, I guess I better get some coffee. It's a good idea. Look, Louis, really, I mean, if you want, I can leave. That's all right. Sit down. It's just that I don't think they should teach sex in the high schools. They should teach it in the house. Well, I agree with you, and I think everybody does it. The, the parents aren't doing the job, Louis, so... You, well, I'm going to do the job. Don't worry about it, okay? All right. What am I going to say to him? Ah, well, see, I think you ought to sit down with Jason and go through a copy of Playboy with him. Look at the pictures together? Yeah. Look, Louis, what you're interpreting as sexuality might just be normal and common curiosity. You see, you sit down with Jason, you go through the magazine, you answer his questions. That way, he's less likely to sublimate his id interest with an artificial digression of his ego interest. I wouldn't want to do that. You want Louie to show dirty pictures to our son? I wouldn't call these dirty pictures, Marge. I mean, I'm talking about visual stimuli references. 
I don't care what you call them. He's not going to see them. But, Marge, you said he's already seen them. He's already seen them. Well, if he's already seen them, then why does he have to be shown them again? Why should I show them to him again? To avoid setting up a taboo. To prevent the possibility of Jason attaching guilt or shame to the idea of looking at pictures of naked ladies. Guilt and shame, right? Wrong. 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 That's exactly what's wrong with our society. Not enough guilt and shame. Everything is tolerated nowadays, isn't it? Even pornography. Now, wait a minute. I would not call this magazine pornographic. I mean, what we're talking about here is a valuable teaching tool. Things have changed since I was a kid. Now, don't start. Don't start with David Crockett again, No, no, okay? no, no. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to look at uh, Sun and Health, you know, the nudie magazine. But they left something to your imagination. I mean, the people that stand behind the trees holding their volleyballs. This is like a lesson in internal medicine here. God, I'm the only thing left is x-rays. I mean, I, I am 39 years old, and I've been married for 13 years, and there are things in here that I had never even seen. No offense, Marge. And there's things in there that Jason's not going to see again. Now, come on, Charlie. I hate to push you out like this, but I, I just feel that Louie and I can handle this on our own. I really appreciate you stopping by, though. You, it was you, really great. You sure you don't want me to wait for Jason? It's no problem. I'm positive. Louie and I can handle this on our own. Okay. Okay? Oh, wait a minute, Charlie. Your magazine. Oh, no, hey, you hang on over there. I'll just take the briefcase. And uh, you might change your mind and do it my way. Okay. See you guys. Bye, Charlie. Bye. Bye, Charlie. Do not believe it. I do not believe it. There, that's it. Do you, would you look at that? Do you believe it? That girl's got to be double-jointed. Have you ever seen a real girl look like this? Yeah. Marilyn Noosh wanted. But it was well done with Kleenex. It's got to be silicone. A nip here, a tuck there. What are you talking about? Plastic surgery. Some people get their noses done, other people get their uh, new sponsors done. Plastic surgery? Yeah. People Plastic don't really surgery. look this good. Where are you going? That's What's it. wrong? I'm going to the morgue right now. Add Adam Moore, uh, what about our son? Hey, Dad, i got to talk to you. Yeah, I'm going to talk to you later, okay? Don't worry, it gets easier. The adolescence is hard. Uh, middle age is great. Absolutely right. Parsegian did have plastic surgery. You, you can see for the little changes here in the cartilage of the nose and the ears. And you know, he, he even seems to have had his chin shortened. How come you didn't know that before? This guy died from a shotgun blast to the back. His whole thorax has exploded. Why the hell should we even look at his head? Mm. And even if we did, why pay attention to some little scars? He might be 20, 25 years old. You're right, I'm sorry. Now, what do you think we're doing here? You think we're cutting and slicing for the fun of it? You think it's Frankenstein's laboratory? We're doing science here. We're doing medicine, forensic medicine. We're doctors. Come on, I said I'm sorry, right? Oh, okay, okay. I mean, you know, I'm a gourmet cook, too, you know? Good. How'd you know about this plastic surgery? Uh, word came down. Totally closed. No communication on this one. It's completely shut. Oh, Louie, I've I'm been worried sick about you all day. What are you worried for? What the police want with you? They just wanted to get me a statement, that's all. You're not in any trouble? No. Yeah, but they seem so angry when they pushed you in the car. Well, that was just because I'm an Aries. What? It's nothing, Ma. Everything's okay, right? What are you doing here? Miss May 80 likes guys who cuddle. Stanley. Louie, I'm in a lot of trouble. No kidding. The cops think I killed Roland Prasegian. Stanley, your fingerprints are all over that shotgun. I, I never touched a shotgun, except, except the one that, that, that Mr. Prasegian handed me. Why did Jackie's father give you a shotgun, Stanley? I built a gun rack for him. I, I needed the shotgun so I could measure it. But, but I didn't do it. Of course. You gotta believe me. I believe you. Your alibi stinks. But I believe. Get him. Who's this? Hello. There you go. Hello. Hello. How are you? Uh, Louis. Uh, can I keep this? Of course. I want to finish the article with Solzhenitsyn and, and tell Jackie that I love her yes, and I that I didn't do it. I'll do that for you, Stanley. Roland Precision's prints are all over the gun, right? Wrong. Your friend's prints are the only ones that's on the gun. Oh, this is gonna be a hard case to crack. downtown to make a statement, that's all, Ma. Listen, do me a favor, call Jason, tell him I can't make it. Louie! That one's gonna be a minute, all right? Wait for me, will you? Sure, Nick, I'll... Okay. 
Jackie Precision in? No. Nope. You know where she went? No. Nope. You know when she'll be back? No. Nope. I'm a friend of hers. Look, this procedure's not seeing anyone today. Camels, huh? They give you a hump on your back, you know. Goodbye. Hey, hold it. You got an accent like my cousin. Are you from Detroit? Jersey. Jersey? Jesus, we're not related then. What are you doing in Canada? Came to take a look at the falls, huh? That didn't take long. Where to now? Uh, downtown, I guess. Oh, hey, hold it, hold it. Follow that car. How? Put it in reverse. Come on, come on. Back it up, back it up. That's it. Jackie, can I speak to you for a minute? Get in the house. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What the hell are you doing, son? Put your hands on top of your head. Don't you move. Wait a minute. I'm with the press, OK? Wait a minute. I got a card. I got a card. Here, here's my card, OK? I'm with the press. Spread your leg. Right, will you do this to Walter Cronkite? You want me to keep the meter running or what? I don't care what you do with the meter, all right? Keep it running. OK, it's clean. I told you that. Yeah. Look, here, Ciccone, read the card. M Mr. Told... Donovan, it's all right. I, I know Mr. Ciccone. He's with me. See, she knows me. I'm so sorry, Mr. Ciccone. Ah, there you go, cousin. It's all right. <laughs> How do you know me? Stanley talks about you all the time. He says we're his best friend. Well, I'm pretty fond of Stanley, too. Listen, he told me to tell you that he loves you very much, and he didn't kill your father. I know. I know. Stanley couldn't hurt a fly. Is he all right? He hasn't phoned me or anything. Yeah, he's okay. It's hard to call somebody from the jail, you know? He didn't kill Daddy, you know. He didn't kill Daddy. Yeah, I know that, and you know that. What we got to do is we got to prove it to other people, see? So i got to ask you some questions. What do you want to know? How come your father had plastic surgery plastic surgery daddy daddy never had plastic surgery yes he did about 20 or 25 years ago he just probably didn't tell you about it no what they do for money your father and your uncle huh well they don't work come on you got the united states cavalry over here right and they got the guns and they got the cars with the diplomatic plates your father has to be somebody after daddy got killed uncle sam told me that they worked for the government Anyway, the American consulate said that it would be safer if we had some security. That's what they called until they find the man who murdered Dad. I got reason to believe that both your uncle and your father were with the CIA. What do you mean, like spies? Hey, what the hell are you doing here, huh? Uncle Sam, he's only trying to help. Texas, get up! That's okay, Jackie. Yeah, I'm gonna get a taxi anyway. Oh, you're not. I got my cab. Taxi! Taxi! Get him out of here! Get him out of here! It's all right. Get him out of here. I got my own cab. Huh? Taxi! That's okay, hey! Hey, well, what about my fare? Who's gonna pay my fare? Make them pay for it, huh? They're entertaining me here. Hey, this is only $10. I got $12.50 on my meter. Listen, that's an American $10 bill. Keep the change. Hey. Who are you? Randall Jackson, U.S. Federal Marshal. Now, you are up to your belt buckling, dabba da droppings, and getting in deeper every minute, so I would advise you to watch your step. You ever read your Official Secrets Act, boy? I'm waiting for the movie to come out. Article 10, subsection 1, paragraph A of the Official Secrets Act for the Dominion of Canada says that for what you are suspected of having committed, or having attempted to commit, or being about to commit, or for what we suspect you have already committed, you might be arrested for without a warrant and detained by any constable or police officer and held indefinitely. Article 10, subsection 1, paragraph A. Oh, come on with the Article A, huh? I'm a reporter, you know that. Being a reporter does not put you above the law. 
Now, you are encroaching upon a very sensitive situation here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And we are working hand in glove with the RCM police on this Parsegian murder. So if you don't want to be put away for a very long time where the sun don't shine, I would advise you to keep your nose clean and keep your feet dry. Well, 1040, good buddy. Thanks a lot. It's been nice. Should have read your horoscope. Yeah. Have a nice day here. That there boy is a loser with a capital L. Where the sun don't shine. That's what he said. Right after he told me about the daba duba diba daba dirt dropping thing. It's all in there, 19A, on the laws. Mr. Ciccone, an official of the United States government has no authority to invoke the Official Secrets Act. Well, this official is in very tight with the Mounties. But the Official Secrets Act pertains to breaches of national trust. Now, you haven't done anything that compromises the Canadian national security. But what if I told you that I have reason to believe that the Precision Brothers might be with the CIA? What? Spies. I'm talking spies over here. Spies? Yeah. Listen, all I know is that you got a bunch of people from New Jersey crawling around that place there with guns and accents and camels. Camels? American cigarettes. And the Precision Brothers have a very mysterious past. Did I mention that one of them had plastic surgery on his face? No. Yeah, well, one did. And I wouldn't be surprised if the other brother did, too. I just keep getting this vision of a, of a guy with a shotgun, right? right? Anyway, I ended up in Boss Hogg's office. Were you forcibly detained by this Mr. Hogg? Well, he had help. The two bozos from New Jersey. Look, all I know is that it looks like these Yanks can come in here and, you know, manhandle your average, typical Canadian citizen over here. No, they can't. Now, this isn't the Wild West. Got a good mind to go over to that consulate and see this Mr. Hogg. Randall Jackson. Well, I'm the prosecutor in this case, and the sooner he gets that straight, the better off he'll be. You're law in this town, right? You are the law. Right. Let's take a walk down the street, Mr. Ciccone. Let's take that walk. Who's Mr. Hogg? Uh-huh. You can confirm that flight to Buffalo? Heather. Uh-huh. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes. Heather Redfern, Assistant Crown Attorney for the County of York, Municipality of Metropolitan Toronto, Canada. To see U.S. Marshal Randall Jackson, please. Do you have an appointment? No. Mr. Jackson's in a meeting and he cannot be disturbed. Well, this is of paramount importance. Would you tell Mr. Jackson that I'd like to see him, please? Consular officials are very busy people. <laughs> you, um, have to make an appointment. Now, if you want to make one... Hey, lady, time lady, next have week. you ever heard the word spy? I beg your pardon? Spy, have you ever heard that word? Mr. Chicone, I'll look after this, That's will I have reason to believe that your Mr. Jackson may be a spy. You do. He also knows a man named Parsegian who's dead, and he was a spy. Mm -hmm. And you could be a spy, for all I know. You see, I'm a Canadian reporter, and me and this lady, we're going to go upstairs, and we're going to see Mr. Jackson the next 10 seconds, or I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to eat your sandwich, you see? I'm going to eat this sandwich, and then I'm going to print a big story about all the spies in this place, okay? You're crazy. Now, you just call him and tell him that coffee ready, all right? Come on. Marshal Randall Jackson, Assistant Crown Attorney Heather Redfern, County of York. What can I do for you, Missy? Don't you missy me, Mr. Marshal. I don't like what I've been hearing about the way you and your colleagues have been comporting yourselves in my bailiwick. Now, there are channels and procedures in this country that have to be adhered to. And if you have any evidence, any information, anything at all to do with the Parsegian case, you better come to me. Jellybean? This is not some banana republic. You can't grab somebody off the streets of Toronto and read the riot act to them. Because if you do, diplomatic immunity or no diplomatic immunity, I'll pluck your eagle bald and I'll have him for breakfast. Pluck his eagle bald? Well, I did get a little hyperbolic, didn't I? Well, it's just that the American-Canadian relations aren't exactly perfect right now, you know? You got high interest rates, the Canadian dollar's real low. Well, Wayne Gretzky, they don't like him. There is no satisfying oh, is there? Excuse me, Miss Redfern. Um, Mr. Jackson would like to see you again. Oh, okay. Alone? Listen, the American eagle is bald. What? It doesn't make sense, pluck his feathers, you know? I mean, you think of a different metaphor. And, and go easy. These people own half the country. What else you got? I don't like Twinkies. I don't know. Listen, come on, you gotta admit that New York is dirtier than Toronto. It's clean here. Big deal. I miss the action in New York. Where's the action here? 
You want action? Tell me where you're going to be Saturday night, and I'll come over and mug you, okay? Mr. Chaconic, could I see you for a moment, please? Excuse me. Okay. How's it going? Uh, Mr. Jackson has explained the entire situation to me, and I have to suggest to you that you uh, cease and desist from prying into this case. What the heck happened? You went in there like John Wayne, you come out like Don Nuts. Certain communication has taken place between Mr. Jackson's office and the RCMP. Now, I've been briefed on a need-to-know basis, and I can assure you that everything is under control. Spies, right? We got spies over here. I didn't say that. Look, I'm not at liberty to discuss this case. Okay, look, I'm going to ask you a question, and you answer me, okay? I'll say, are they spies? And if they are, you go, and if they're not, you go, okay? Are they spies? Was that, uh, or was it, huh? Are they spies? They're not spies. But I gotta go. Says they're not spies, and who the hell are they? May I help you? Uh, yes. This is, uh, Roman procedure, right? That's right. The uh, family will be here shortly for the visitation. I'm his nephew, from out of town. From out of town? Whereabouts? Detroit. Detroit? I have some friends in Detroit. Uh, do you know the Winters from the Winter and Winter Funeral Homes? Well, I, I don't know the Winters personally, but I'm very familiar with their home. Um, I was very close to Uncle Rowley. He practically raised me. Oh, yes. Well, I'm very sorry. Yeah, I was wondering, can I be alone with him for a couple, a couple of seconds by myself? I have a plane to catch him. You will be waiting for the family. Your Uncle Sam will be here at any minute. Uncle Sam, he's going to be here, of course. I... No, I'm sorry. I, I, I just booked a plane. I'm in and out. You know, this is quite sudden for me. And... Very well. I'll leave you alone with the deceased. Thanks a lot. of a handgun without a permit, one count of assault with a deadly weapon. This is Archie Campbell, live for CKTO from police headquarters. How you doing, Louis? Oh, not too good. I thought I was on a story about spies. Turns out I'm dealing with a uh, basic criminal here, maybe mafia types. I got uh, guys who had plastic surgery 20 years ago, uh, had their fingerprints removed too. You erased their prints? Yeah. That's old-fashioned stuff. Well, these are all fashion guys. Look, what if I asked you to find out for me about two brothers, uh, major criminals in the United States, late 50s, early 60s? How about Joey and Tony the Fat Man Profoci? Yeah, they were brother and sister. The Fat Man was a transvestite. Brothers. Just give me brothers. Ricky and Willie Marchesi. Uh, brothers? Sure, brothers. That's what you asked for, wasn't it? Tell me about them. Both killed in 67 by Patriarcha. A big no, no, dominant. No, we're live people here, live brothers. In prison? Uh, no, no. Look, I figure maybe they, uh, turn state's evidence, like the Valachi case, remember that? Sang their way into the FBI witness protection program? You got it, Archie. Why didn't you say so? Frank and Vinny DeFranco. Vinny? He, he, call, he called the, the guy Vinny is dead in the funeral parlor. What, you know anything about them? Oh, of course you do. I'm sorry. They got caught in connection with a big gambling heist in 61. But they got the whitewash when they agreed to talk to a grand jury. They also got a couple of million from the robbery. No questions asked. A couple of million, jeez. Well, what happened to them? Mob got to Vinny's wife. Killed her for revenge. The brothers went underground. Uh, there was a baby girl, too, as I recall. Who's the latest, Arch? Oh, thanks. They liked out those two. How's that? Uh, they weren't big in the mob. They were just soldiers. Soldiers, what do you mean? Hitmen. Shotgun specialists. Probably killed 20 guys between them. 20 guys? 
Everything all right, Miss Parsegian? Yeah, Mr. Donovan, I'm fine. I'll be just inside if you need me. Okay, okay, thanks. Chacon, next time you're a dead man. I know something you don't know. You're not going to talk your way out of this one. Stanley Marlton did not kill your brother. Your brother killed himself. You've got a great imagination. No, 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 I'm telling you the truth here. Look at this. You see this thing? This is a, this is a shotgun shell. And it was in this uh, metal piece here that screws into uh, the water thing over here, right? And you, and you got all these wires that go directly to, to that switch over there. If you, if you touch the switch yourself, you see how this thing was set up. I'm telling you the truth here. My brother would never kill himself. Your brother was gonna die anyway. He was terminally ill. I swear to God, the coroner told me he had like six months to live. Sam, don't you see what happened? Your brother loved his daughter, right? And he knew that, that his daughter was in love with a bozo. So, <sighs> he rigged this whole thing to make it look like my friend Stanley Malton did the murder. He framed him. And he always had to do things his own way. <laughs> I told him we'd never get away with knocking off Luciano's gambling racket, and we got caught. <laughs> he decided to squeal to the feds. We wound up, both of us, with faces we couldn't even recognize. Did you ever see a stranger every time you look in the mirror, huh? Uh, I'm used to seeing my own face, and that's why I appreciate that you put the gun down, Sam, you know? Come on, hey, come on now. Hey, Sam. You spilled the goods to Jack, did you, huh? Listen, the cover was blown as soon as Vinnie killed himself, don't you understand? Now she hates me. Oh, come on, hey. You had to put you over, didn't you, huh? No, Mr. DeFranco. You better let me have that. Jackie wants to say goodbye to you. She does? Yeah. <laughs> Just like her old man, you know. Gotta have things her own way. Yeah. You will never hear another anti-American sentiment from these lips. Give me a kiss. The thing is, with those pictures in the magazines of those women, it's like, yeah. a, a, in the beginning, you're, you're using the pictures a, yeah. as a substitute for the real thing, and then eventually you're using the real thing as a substitute for the pictures. I don't get it. What I'm trying to say is that the women in those magazines are not like the real thing. I mean, it's pictures, you know? And, and pictures don't talk. Women talk all the time. And, uh... Uh, they put makeup on them, and they, 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 they uh, uh, put different lighting, and they airbrush them. Airbrush them? Yeah, airbrush them. 
it's it's a process by which they get rid of uh, uh, little moles, you know, and 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 things like that. And and uh, I just don't want you to spend your life looking for a woman who's got a staple in, in a belly button, okay? Oh. Here, look. What's that? This is a hat. This is my Davy Crockett hat, and uh, your grandmother found it. I want you to have it. Looks nice, huh? This is raccoon fur. Yeah. They killed a raccoon to make this? So uh, This is sick. I'm wearing a dead animal on my head. Oh, come on, it's not. Don't be so jaded, huh? Put it on your head. Mr. Ciccone? Oh, uh, hi, how you doing? Hi. Your wife thought I might find you here. Jason, why don't you go look at the cows after talking to Miss Redstone? Yeah, I bet she doesn't need any airbrushing. Put the hat on. Put it on! Put the hat on, please. Kids, eh? Listen, sorry if I'm interrupting anything. That's all right. We're just talking about hats. Oh. Listen, I uh, just came by to uh, thank you for kind of stirring up things in the Parse agent case. And that was nothing. Nothing? Do you realize that you saved an innocent man from going to trial and you uh, got an undesirable alien to leave the country? I wouldn't call that nothing. Oh, maybe we should call that something. <laughs> Miss uh, Parsegian and Mr. Martin are going to be getting married. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be the best man. Oh. And the undesirable alien is going to be in attendance, too. Right before he leaves the country, Uncle Sammy's going to be there. Well, apparently Jackie's not even going to touch a penny of her father's money. How'd you know that? Well, I read about it in the paper. You read about it in the paper? Yeah. I told them it should be in the Saturday edition. They promised to have the sidebar, my picture, and everything. No, I didn't read about it in the Gazette. In the Star. You read about it in the Star? I think you've been scooped, Mr. Chicone. The New York Daily News pays Stanley Moulton $10,000 for the exclusive rights to the story of his star-crossed fiancé. And they call this guy a loser? I'm hoping and wishing that the next apparition is the sight of you welcoming me home. It's hard enough living without having visions to the left and the right of you. They won't leave me alone. Give me a cold, hard fact. Like when you threw me out the door I couldn't believe my eyes 